Lesson 7.6, Rename Fractions and Mixed Numbers. A mixed number is a number represented by a whole number and a fraction. So whole numbers are like 1, 2, 3, 4, and the fractions are 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths. When we put them together, we have a whole number and a fraction. We have mixed numbers like 1 and 1 fourth, 2 and 1 fourth, 3 and 1 fourth. We can write a mixed number as a fraction greater than 1 by modeling with fraction strips or fraction bars and counting how many parts there are. We want to change 1 and 1 third into a fraction greater than 1. We have 1 whole and 1 third for 1 and 1 third. And we need to use 4 1 third parts in order to be the same length for the fraction bars. 3 thirds, 3 1 third parts is equal to 1 whole, and we have another 1 third, that's the 1 and 1 third. We see we used 4 1 third parts, we have 4 thirds. We can write a fraction greater than 1 as a mixed number by using a number line. We count the number of whole units and parts left over. We want to turn 5 halves into a mixed number. Our number line goes from 0 halves to 1 half, 2 halves, that's 1 whole, 3 halves, 4 halves, that's 2 whole, we have 5 halves, that's equal to 2 and a half. 5 halves is equal to 2 and a half. It's telling us to write the mixed number as a fraction. We have 1 and 2 sevenths. We know that a fraction with the same numerator and denominator is equal to 1 whole. So we can rename this 1 as a 7 sevenths because of this denominator 7. 1 and 2 sevenths is equal to 7 sevenths as the 1 whole plus the 2 sevenths as the fraction. It's got like denominators, so we just add the numerators to get 9 sevenths. We can write a mixed number as a fraction using multiplication and addition. We have 2 and a half. We multiply the whole number 2 by the denominator 2, then add the numerator to get the new numerator. And we use the given denominator 2. We go around counterclockwise this way. We do 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 more is 5. That's our new numerator, and we put it over the given denominator 2. We have 5 halves. We have 1 whole, 2 whole. That's the 2 and a half. We need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 half size parts to equal 2 and a half. 2 and a half is equal to 5 halves. We multiply, then add the numerator to get the new numerator. Let's try that again. Our mixed number is 1 and 2 fifths. We multiply the whole number to the denominator, 1 times 5. We add the numerator 2. 1 times 5 plus 2 is 7. We use the denominator 5, we have 7 fifths. 1 and 2 fifths is equal to 7 fifths, that's 7 fifth size parts. We can look at it as 1 and 2 fifths is equal to unit fractions. We have 7 of them, 5 fifths is equal to the 1 whole, and the 2 fifths fraction, we add them together and get 7 fifths. And the 7 fifths makes a fraction that is greater than 1. Here's our 1, and because we're adding the 2 fifths, it's now greater than 1. We can write a fraction greater than 1 as a mixed number by modeling with a number line. We have 10 fourths. Our number line goes from 0 as 0 fourths, and it goes all the way up to a 3 as 12 fourths. We can see 4 fourths with the same numerator and denominator as 1 whole. And we keep going. We see 8 fourths is 2 whole. 10 fourths is 2 and 2 fourths. We can write it as unit fractions. We have 10 1 fourth unit fractions. 4 of them, 4 fourths, is equal to 1 whole. Another 4 of them, 4 fourths, is equal to another whole. We have 2 fourths left over. We have 1, 2 whole and 2 fourths, 2 and 2 fourths. And we can simplify the fraction part. We ignore the whole number, and we just look at the fraction to simplify it. 
And if you don't remember how to do that, there's a link to video 6.3 where we learned how to put fractions in their simplest form in the description. We find a common factor for 2 and 4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. We get 1 half. Now we put it back with the whole number. We have 2 and a half. Fractions greater than 1 have numerators that are greater than the denominators. And fractions greater than 1 are called improper fractions. We need to circle the improper fractions. So remember, the numerators are going to be greater than their denominators. We look at 5 eighths and see that 5 is not greater than 8, so nope. We look at 7 twelfths and see that 7 is not greater than the 12th, so no. We look at 3 halves and the numerator is greater than the denominator, so that is a fraction greater than 1. That is an improper fraction. Here we have 8 fifths, and the 8 is greater than the 5, so that numerator is greater than the denominator. That is an improper fraction. That is a fraction greater than 1. Here we have 11 fourteenths, and this numerator is not greater than the denominator, so no, that is not an improper fraction. That is not a fraction greater than 1. We need to use multiplication and addition to rename the mixed number as fractions greater than 1. We start by multiplying the whole number by the denominator. 3 times 10 is 30. Then we add the numerator. 30 plus 7 is 37. We use the same denominator, so the denominator will be 10. 3 and 7 tenths is equal to 37 tenths. Here we have 5 and 4 eighths. We multiply the whole number by the denominator 8. 5 times 8 is equal to 40. We add the numerator. 40 plus 4 is 44. We use the same denominator 8. 5 and 4 eighths is equal to 44 eighths. We go counterclockwise, multiply the whole number to the denominator, then add the numerator to get the new numerator. Then we just use the denominator that's there. We can write a fraction greater than 1 as a mixed number by using repeated subtraction of fractions that equal one whole that have the same numerator and denominator. We have 7 thirds. We can take away a 3 thirds as a one whole. Then we have 4 thirds because 7 minus 3 is equal to 4 and they have like denominators. We can take away another 3 thirds from this 4 thirds. That's going to leave us with 1 third. So we have one whole, one whole, and a third. That's 2 and 1 third. We just keep subtracting one whole until we can't anymore. And we count the wholes and the leftover fraction part for our mixed number. We can write a fraction greater than 1 as a mixed number by using division. And we think of the fraction bar as the division symbol. And the numerator would be the dividend, and the denominator is the divisor. We see 7 thirds, we think 7 divided by 3. For 7 divided by 3, we ask ourselves how many times the 3 can fit into the 7. How many times can this 3 fit into that 7? Well, 3 times 2 is 6. We do the multiplication and the subtraction, and we get one remainder. And this remainder is going to be the numerator for the mixed number. And the divisor is going to be the denominator. And this quotient, this 2, is going to be 2 whole. So let's try a couple more of those. We have 23 fifths. We think of this as 23 divided by 5. How many times can 5 fit into 23? Well, 5 times 4 is 20. We do the multiplication and write it, the product here. We do our subtraction and get a 3. Our remainder is 3. That means we have 4 whole, and our remainder 3 is going to be the numerator, and our divisor is going to be the denominator. We have 4 and 3 fifths. We can do it with 9 fourths. We think 9 divided by 4. 4 fits into 9 2 times because 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract the 8 and get a 1 remainder. We have 2, and our remainder is going to be the numerator, and the 4, our divisor, is going to be the denominator. We have 2 and 1 fourth. 
So the whole number is how many times the denominator can fit into the numerator, and the fraction part of the mixed number is going to be how much is left over with the numerator as the remainder. And I know this can seem confusing, but you can rewind the video and watch these parts again to make sure you understand. Let's try some higher order thinking skills. We need to find the unknown numbers, so we're missing a whole number and a numerator. We have 43 sixths, so we think of this as a division problem, 43 divided by 6. How many sixes can fit into 43? Well, 6 times 7 is 42. We subtract it and have one left over. Our whole number is going to be the quotient 7. Our missing numerator is going to be the remainder, 1. And we see that we kept the same denominator. If we think of a fraction greater than 1 as a little division problem, we can change it into a mixed number very quickly. Mrs. Kim needs 1 and 1 fourth cups sugar for her cookie recipe. She only has a 1 eighth cup measuring cup, so how many 1 eighth cups will she need to measure out 1 and 1 fourth cups of sugar? So we think we can use fraction bars or fraction strips to help us. We can see how many 1 eighth parts equal 1 and 1 fourth. We have one whole and a fourth, that's 1 and 1 fourth. And we line up eighth size fraction parts to see how many would make the same length. We use the 1 eighths because that's the size of her little measuring cup. 8 eighths is equal to 1 whole. So right here we have 1 whole, that's 8 1 eighth parts, and the 1 fourth is 2 eighths. See? That makes 10 eighths altogether. We have 10 1 eighth size parts. That means she needs 10 of these 1 eighth measuring cups to measure out 1 and 1 fourth cups of sugar. So we can rename fractions and mix numbers by using fraction bars or fraction strips. We can use a number line. We can also use multiplication and addition to rename mixed numbers as fractions. We can also change a fraction greater than 1, an improper fraction, into a mixed number by thinking of it as a little division problem. Our next video, 7.7, .7, we're going to add and subtract mixed numbers with like denominators. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you're having a really nice day. Bye.